This is your Gap and Go recap for the week of January 2nd through the 5th. Hi everyone, it's Dow on the Dow. In this video, I'm just gonna go over the trades that I talked about with some gaps to the upside and gaps to the downside and see if either filled. First up is Nvidia. We ended the week at $490.97. The gap that I was tracking was this one to the upside. We did not close it out. This will be in play for Monday. We went as high as $499.90. So this I will be keeping track of as well. And this gap to the downside that I talked about closed out on Tuesday. It touched when we opened up. So this gap is no longer in play. It will no longer haunt us to the downside. If you move this white line out of the way, you can see that it touched there. This helps me separate the week. So I will keep it right there. This gap formed on Friday to the downside. So unfortunately, this will take us down next week and possibly fill. And that begins at roughly 483.20. The next one is Lowe's. We ended the week at 212.51. I'll go over price targets later in a separate video. The gap that I was tracking took us all the way to 225.33. It did not close. I will extend it. We tickled it over here, but it did not go and complete the gap. Now this gap, I will move this white line out of the way so you can see better. See how this gap, actually, let me move it this way. So this gap, to the downside, touched right there. Oops. Sometimes when I'm dealing with multiple gaps, it definitely gets in the way. There we go. Just to be a little mo bit more precise. So the gap started to the downside at 220.02, closed out at 215.55. Obviously a good area to go short. This will no longer haunt us. I will, will remove that. Meantime, this gap formed to the upside. So now we have two gaps to the upside to look forward to. And that one will begin at roughly 216.82. And I am not tracking anything to the downside. That's new. Next one is Oracle. I have a lot of tickers to get through, so I will try to go quickly here. The gap that I was tracking took us all the way up here to 114.85, roughly. Or 83-ish. And we got within the range the previous week that I have been tracking this, but it did not close. It's a big one. We're not even in the channel now. When you look at this, negative two and two standard deviations typically is where price stays. Anything outside of that is an outlier. It will not stay there. It could get there and then fall back down as people take their profits or they buy the dip. But we are not in this channel yet, so it's just something to be aware of. But it is still in play. Could take a while to close out. And this gap developed on Wednesday to the upside, and you could have made 
a run from down here all the way up to here knowing that this would close because it is in the realm of negative two and two. So this gap is harder to get to, but this gap would easily fill because it's the parameters that I work in. And that closed out at 103.56. And then what happened? Hit resistance, fell back down. The next one is Nike. I am in this for my mom. We were up and now I think, I think I'm still up. I'm not really sure because this, this ticker has been whipping us around, but this was a long-term play for me. The gap that I was tracking takes us to roughly 122.50. Obviously not in that zone. But meantime, these two gaps developed to the upside. We have not closed. So that begins at roughly 103.61. This one begins at 105.78. We are not in the zone yet for this one and maybe this week we could get into this one. So I will carry it over, ignore all those lines, previous support and resistance lines for me. And the next one is Starbucks. I'm also in this trade for my mom. The gap that I was tracking closes out at 97.64. We did not even come close. This will be in play for the following week. When I tracked it last at 96.01, we went from resistance to support and then back up to resistance, back down to support. Now we are at the middle of the trend, but when we are up here, this turns into resistance and on the way down, it turns into support. So from down here to up here, we are at resistance again. And Baba is a nasty one. All right. The gap that I was tracking was this one that takes us up to 78.40. We did not get there, but previously, the previous week, we touched on it, but could not touch it again. Close though. And then we started to crater. So the gap that I will also be tracking now to the upside is this one. We've got three now to contend with. Closes out at 76.54. And this one, oops, also developed on Friday. Closes out at 74.64. I will anticipate this one to close this coming up week. That should be doable. Now, this gap. I will move out, move my white line out of the way. This gap, we started to touch it, but we have not closed it. This gap is still in play for Monday. All right, this gap that I talked about that takes us down to, hold on, I'll give you the price target in a second. This gap touched right here. So this nasty gap to the south side is done. That closed out at 73.54 to the downside. It started at 74.83 and closed out. So this is no longer going to haunt us. And this gap that I talked about to the south side let me take a look at this. This is a smaller one that closed, but let's do this one next. It gets confusing. This one to the south side touched. It 
it, st it went up, so we gapped down, and then it touched right here. So this one that started at 76.97, closed out at 76.92, is no longer going to haunt us. That was a move to the south side, a short play, if you like to go short. Now this one from the previous week that I extended out touched right here at 75.33 is no longer going to haunt us to the south side as well. So that's done. And all right. So we've got three gaps to the upside and one gap to the south side. 76, 73.65. Let me mark this so that way I can delete the other one and not get confused. I get easily confused. Fifty-four. There we go. Delete that. All right. That's Baba. I am in this trade. The gap that I was tracking closes out at 56.39, not even close. All right, but it's still in play, so that's something to look forward to to the upside on Schlumberger. And this gap to the south side has not closed either. This tiny gap here that developed on Friday closed to the downside. It went up, so I anticipate price to go down and close here. That was an easy one because it was in the realm that I know price will go to, negative two and the middle of the trend and two standard deviations all day long. This gap here closed as well. It started right here, went up, and I anticipate price to go down and it touched so that's no longer going to haunt us to the south side. But this gap is still in play. The next one is Altria Group MO. The gap began to the north side at 41.35, closes out at 42.40. Oops, that is not the line I wanted to grab. It's this green one. So this is still in play for next week. Closes out at 42.40. It started at 41.35. Tracked it here, went gapped up and down. Oh, wait a minute. We gapped, sorry, we gapped down, so I anticipated it to go up. Let me show you, see how that. There was a huge empty abyss right there. So it went down, so I anticipated it to go up. And it's slowly getting there. We got as high as almost four standard deviations. I never expect price to stay there. I always anticipate price to break down at two, three, and four standard deviations. And it did exactly that, 42.05, all the way down to support. And then bounce back up again. So we will close at 42.40 again. And do I try, have anything? Nope, that's good. So this gap, I will, I might get in this one for my mom, we'll see. The next one is WMB, the Williams Company. I did take a gap trade on this one. The gap that I talked about from the previous week that closed this week at 35.81 closed out right there. So this is no longer in play. And I closed out at the, at the time the closest standard deviations or two standard deviations was uh, $36. So I closed out here and obviously the deviations continue to move. The calculations move, the standard deviations. And for the week, we topped out, look at that. 
at two standard deviations. Had I wanted to take a longer trade, be a little riskier with my trade, I could have tapped out right here at 36 68 but the for the week it went to oh it went down sorry we closed out at the high excuse me of 3596 on Friday but it reached 3696 and then started to melt down so that's done I will no longer be tracking this because all I was trying to do was track this gap and when we ran up over here this gap began so now we've got a potential gap to the south side that will haunt us for a little while. We're not in that zone, we're not in that channel, but something to be aware of, it starts at roughly 34.91. The next one is Pfizer. I'm in this trade for my mom. The gap I am tracking takes us to 35, excuse me, 30, grabbed the wrong I think it's where is it let me just move that that out of the way so the gap I'm tracking takes us to 30 35 we're not in that channel not in that zone definitely not for Monday to close out but something to look forward to. And this tiny gap down here to the south side closed out at roughly 28.80. It went up, gapped up, and then look at how long it took to go back down and closed. The next one is SoFi. This one's a nightmare. When I tracked it, the gap I was looking to close was this one to the upside. At 11.29, not even close, not even in that channel, something to be aware of, and a potential play to the upside. Meantime, this gap formed to the upside on Tuesday, hasn't closed yet, it just tickled it. It gapped down, so I look, I will look for it to close to the upside. And this one has not closed either to the downside, that developed beginning of the week, and this one keep track of as well oh wait a minute we kept oh look at this this is done because this gap we gapped down right here oh that's another potential gap I will turn on my magnet and show you here to here we gap down so I will anticipate a gap up yay That will take us, oh, let me turn off the magnet for a second. It makes my chart get wonky, it's so weird. From where we are to here, 9.03, it begins. All right, so this, this touched here, so this gap is no longer a threat to us to the south side done this gap touched right here as well where is this oh it's back here so I was this gap or oops move this stuff out of the way I said it gets wonky here I'm trying to grab I'm gonna move this out of my way here this is what I'm trying to grab this one I extended it but it touched on the way down here and here cl closed out this out of the way so you can see see that touched right there done it took us down to 896 so we're done with that let me just move this one more time out of the way yeah all right I just wanted to confirm I marked this out correctly 
with the gap up. This one is done. That's good. Move this back here. This gap formed on Friday. It also closed out on Friday to the upside. So again, this was the original gap that I was tracking and now there are two more gaps to the upside, so three gaps. The next one is NEO. The gap that I was tracking was this one, not in that zone. Let me move this out of the way. Takes us to 1030. And meantime, for this week, this gap, we gap down. I anticipate a gap up to close out eventually. Not in the channel, not in the zone, something to be aware of. And this one as well, this tiny one that will take us to four standard deviations. Move this back to Tuesday, because Monday was the holiday, remember? This gap closed to the upside within this week. It formed to the downside, gapped, and closed at roughly 840. And this one is so tiny that I really shouldn't even bother to waste my time marking it, but it starts at 846, and this one at 894 to the upside. We've got three gaps that I'm tracking, and then a gap to the south side, way down here, not in the channel, not in the zone, but I will continue to extend it until we hit it because we will eventually. Sometimes it just takes forever. And finally, the last one is Nokia. The gap that I was tracking took us to 349. Oops, wrong thing I grabbed. I need to grab this one, the blue line. I mentioned that the gap closes out at 349 and we touched it right there on Friday, 350. We closed at 350 at two standard deviations so that was a nice little trade to the upside, remove. It started down here at 324, closed out there. It's just tiny little movements that I'm tracking. Obviously, if you bought it at a lower price, you would make more money, but for the week, that went up roughly 7.72%. So congratulations if you were in that trade. So I am done with the 13 tickers that I talked about. Only two, carry, two completed the gap cycle. That was Nokia and WMB. So I will carry everything else over to the following week and pick two more tickers for you that will be in the negative two and two standard deviations. That way you can play it out for the week. The other ones are longer term gaps longer term plays and WMB let me just show you what that was such a tiny tiny gap closure that basically oh barely anything not even a half a percent but if you bought there and traded if you bought at Let's just say negative two standard deviations right at the beginning there, this line. And you closed out at 350, excuse me, 36, 68. That would have been almost a 5% return for one week. That's pretty good. 
But again, my purpose was just to get in on that gap and get out. Get in, get up, get out. And this is a gap trade, so that's why I got out. This was not a longer swing trade for me. I just wanted to complete that gap. But I bought it down here. Oh, so I'm sorry. My, my uh, gain was roughly 3%. All right, that does it for me. Thank you so much for watching.